Hey guys, Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla. I am the gorilla, and in this video I want to show you guys Cineware, which is uh, new, it's built into the new After Effects, and it's this great workflow between Cinema 4D and After Effects. Finally, my two favorite things coming together, and uh, I want to show you guys how this works and how I think it'll benefit Cinema 4D users. I have another video that's more for After Effects users to kind of introduce them to the Cinema 4D side of things, but this is for Cinema 4D uh, users that are interested in this new workflow and how it kind of uh, helps with they, uh, their, their workflow. So let's go check this out. Let's head on in. So we're here in Cinema 4D. And I have like uh, this, this text uh, render here, and we have some text. We have some uh, some MoGraph kind of making this move around and stuff. And we're getting near the point where we're like, okay, this is looking pretty good. But let's get this in to our compositing program so we could do our final uh, kind of color correction and everything to it. And so what we would usually do is go render all this stuff into frames, but you don't need to do that anymore. So check this out. If you go into After Effects. You pull in your Cinema 4D file directly in. So let's go do that. Here's our our Cinema 4D file for this scene. And uh, if I pull it into After Effects and then just drag it into a new composition, it will make a new composition based on that Cinema 4D file. So check this out. So it's in this it's in this uh, kind of software mode right now. So it's very quick to play back, and it'll come and animate all these frames. Uh, but your your cinema frames are now being rendered inside of After Effects. So if you want to see the full render, you can go to Standard, and you can see it'll render, and it'll be exactly the same as outside if you were to render it straight out. But it's in After Effects. So what this, what this means is now you don't have to commit your 3D render to you know, a TIFF sequence or anything, um, and then pull that into After Effects. Everything's built in. Um, Everything is still being able to be changed at any moment because we have this workflow now. So, so check out some of the things we could do. First of all, all of our cameras are available now inside of uh, After Effects. So uh, we don't have to render out three different types of cameras, three different types of scenes or renders. All we have to do is go into our Cineware uh, kind of plugin here that automatically uh, opens up with our file, and we can switch our camera out. So check this out. We could say select Cinema 4D camera, and then if we uh, click on set camera, a little dialog pops up with all my cameras. So right now I have the bottom up camera. If I select far, I'm gonna hit okay, and it's gonna re-render that, but with the far camera. So here it goes. And it's actually opening up cinema and rendering it in the background and popping it directly into the scene. So check this here, we have this far camera, and if we kind of move around, uh, you could see the animation. It's going to re-render and kind of jump around here. So uh, let me just lower the res because we're at a third here. I think it'll look a little nicer for you guys. And um, so that's cool. So not so we have the ability to play around with our different cameras. So let's set one more camera. We have our front camera here, and it's going to jump to it. It's going to re-render, and there we go. So now we don't have to decide during render time in cinema what cameras we're going to use. Very cool. Also, uh, what else do we have access to? Well, we have access to all the multi-pass layers and all the multi and all the layers sets that we have set up inside of Cinema. So let's jump back into Cinema, and I'll show you what we have. We have um, some layer, some uh, objects that are set to layers. We also have in our render settings some object buffers, so we could pull those up as well inside of the plugin. So um, in After Effects, you could just set up your object buffer for just this text. Let's say you wanted to color correct just the text. You could set up that object buffer and then use that directly in here. It's pretty cool. Um, so what else can we do? Well, let's say you have your cameras and all, but you want to animate this around. Well, now you can use not just Cinema 4D cameras, but you can actually make an After Effects camera, and you could use that instead. So let's make an After Effects camera, and let's set this up. And let's tell Cineware that we don't want to use any Cinema cameras. We want to use our comp camera from After Effects. And this will bring it up. So it looks like we have to move this around. Let's go back to software. And let's go back to box. And what this allows you to do is quickly place your camera without worrying about any of the rendering. So you can see you know, uh, uh, roughly where our ty type is. And we can get it up. And then we could go back to final and see that final uh, render.
And again, this is a camera inside of After Effects that we're rotating around and, and being able to animate inside of, of After Effects and not have to go back. Okay, so up till now, you, you, could, you could see like how powerful the, the camera stuff is, but here's where it gets really cool. So let's say, let's say, okay, let's go back to this other camera. Let's go to one of the cinema cameras. Let's say we're sitting here, we're hanging out, and we're compositing this thing, right? So we add some color correction, we do all this stuff, and then, if, you know, the, the, the classic thing is like the client at the last minute needs a change or, or you want to change something. Well, what you would have, uh, what, we, what you used to have to do is go back to cinema, make the change. So let's say they want this to say something else. Right now it says eat, sleep, render, right? What else do we want this to say? The client calls up and they go, no, we want it to say, um, uh, you know, like uh, wake, wake, sleep, render, something like that. And you go, wow, that's not as cool to say, but okay, I get it. You want to change. Well, now you would have to do that and then render all this out um, and wait for the cinema render and then pull it back into After Effects. But just by going in here, making the change, hitting save and going back into After Effects, you can see it's going to update right away. This is where it gets really powerful. So now um, if you're like me, you have the ability to change anything you want at any moment. And this is where I think it, this is a great workflow tool. It's going to speed up a lot of time, but this is, I think, mostly going to be able to allow you to be more creative when you get in your compositing mode. Let's say you want to change something. You don't have to worry about the time. All the rendering is going to happen at the end. You can make your changes here. So example, we have a, a blue background. Let's say we wanted to change that, you know, our compositing. In fact, let's go to a more um, fully composited scene here. So right here we have the same scene, but I added some compositing to it in After Effects. So we have, um, you know, our, uh, like a vignette here. We have some color correction on top of it. And we have some like sun flares. We have all this cool stuff, right? And we're getting close to the end now where we're, we're, we're about to render out our, our, our After Effects file and the whole thing's done. And the same thing happens. You can go back and change it. But let's say it's a creative difference. Let's say you want to change the lighting. You want to change the color. You want to change everything. Well, that would be really tricky to set up in After Effects to get all the different mats. You would have to go render out you know, object buffers and all this stuff. But because we're using Cineware, we can jump back, go into our... Um, our uh, background material and let's say we want this to be orange instead of blue we could do that let's say we want our lighting instead of this kind of like daylight lighting here where we have our kind of sun and our, our blue sky here let's say we um, want different lighting and in this case I have some set up right now it's I have these soft lighting here I'm gonna turn that on turn off our daylight right lighting and you can see now we have a totally different type of lighting. We have this really nice hot spot here and we have kind of a more overall global color. If we save this, head back in After Effects, it all will update. So check this out. Oh, that that was our uh, old one. So let's go back to that. Boom. So check it out. All the orange, everything fixes, it, all the lighting changes, all the background changes and, it, and everything's ready to go. So very, very powerful. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was more animation. So let's jump back into cinema and I'll show you uh, this scene here, which is this cube, this kind of rounded cube being uh, busted up on all these little pieces. And we're using transform here to kind of like animate all these pieces out. And we have this lighting and everything's ready to go. Well, same thing applies. If you go into After Effects and uh, I ha already have this set up, let me show you what I have set up. I have this um, transform scene all composited and ready to go. And if you wanted to change, again, if you want to change anything at any moment, you can go fix that. So here's our scene. Our little cube kind of blows up. It starts off normal. And then all the all the little pieces kind of like fly up into the air, right? Great. So again, if you were doing the traditional workflow and you wanted to change something like the color or the object or, or even the effect itself, you would have to re-render. In this case, we go back into cinema and we make a change. We go to transform, and instead of the butterfly effect here, maybe we make a um, let's say swarm effect, or let's yeah, let's make a let's make the swarm effect, but also crank up the amount. 
So let's come down here and really make this thing fly out. So a totally different animation. Now it just kind of flies out in all directions. And if we hit save, come in After Effects, it automatically will be updated. So there it is. New animation, new, um, new, totally new effect. And it's all ready uh, in After Effects, ready to hit render or ready to recomposite. So really powerful stuff. Um, I didn't touch on nearly enough here. Uh, let me open up the... Uh, uh, the dialogue here and show you what what other things we have available. So we have the ability to extract all of the scene data, including lights and cameras, right out of cinema and pull it in. We also have the ability to um, make these image layers, which allows you to composite your reflections and your specular all separately. Uh, you guys have done that, but you 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 usually would um, have to render out all those movies or or TIFF sequences separately. Now it's all built into this plugin um, or into this kind of system here. Uh, we also have the multi-passes like I talked about and the layers. Anyway, we will get into much, much more of what this does. In fact, I'm still learning uh, more and more about what this does, but I wanted to give you guys kind of a quick preview of Cineware and uh, and how I think it'll it'll change the way that people composite their stuff. You've always heard me talk that compositing is kind of that mandatory thing as a part of 3D. Get it out of 3D, do your final render, bring it into After Effects or, or whatever your compositing tool is and do that. But in this case, why choose anything else? Because you can pull it right in and, and, and composite live. Live compositing, baby. Anyway, uh, I will uh, see you guys in more videos very soon. We're definitely going to have more tutorials on this. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll see you then. I'll see you then. Bye, everybody.